Welcome, everybody. Thanks for taking the opportunity to sit down with me. Uh, very much appreciate it. Um, Engage Point uh, has long been a pro proponent for uh, modular uh, systems implementation in health and human services. What do you really see as the, the opportunity for states here? Engage Point has indeed been practicing and preaching modularity for many, many years. We see modularity as an excellent option for the states to reduce the risk associated with enterprise system implementation, to be much more agile in responding to policy makers and citizen expectations, and to spur innovation in the health and human services ecosystem. Okay, now many will say that this conversation um, has in fact happened before. What do you see that's different this time? What we see is different this time is the convergence of expectations. What the federal government is doing in defining modularity guidelines and funding mandates moves it from um, suggestions to uh -huh. ne necessities. But more importantly, our state clients are seeking a better way. The legacy model of custom-built solutions uh -huh. is not serving their needs or that of the citizen as well as they need to. And the citizen expectations are changing in that they expect greater engagement and more self-service. Mm -hmm. And we see the convergence of all these needs to collide with modularity as our best option to achieve them. Okay. So very, we are very excited about modularity as a way to transform this sector. Okay. And now, f from the state perspective, uh, in terms of readiness, what are some of the key uh, items that uh, states should be considering? Modularity does change a number of domains, particularly the state will need to think about procurement, governance, implementation, integration, and operations of the system differently. Um, and the roles and responsibilities and the skill set that the states typically have used to manage enterprise solutions will change pretty significantly. Okay. Now, for, for states to consider and to really gauge their readiness um, in terms of uh, participation in, in a more modular implementation strategy. What can they do? What, what sort of tools are available to them? We have developed a modularity maturity model based on our decades of experience in implementing enterprise solutions. And the objective of this model is to allow the state to measure their readiness in each of these domains, be it governance or procurement or integration and others, and then to identify areas that need remediation and define a clear plan to remediate them. We believe a very disciplined approach to modularity is what is needed to be successful. Understood. And that also talks um, a little bit to the role of the systems integrator. Um, modularity uh, certainly serves up uh, a redefinition of the traditional role of the systems integrator. What are your thoughts on that? That is one of the roles that will be very fundamentally redefined. Historically, system integrator has been the one throat to choke, the party that builds the system from scratch. And in the modular world, we have to redefine it as a module integrator, someone who is responsible for the ecosystem on which all the modules can interoperate, but is not trying to build the functionality that will be procured as part of each of the modules. Okay. So it is a role that changes quite fundamentally and I believe for the better. Okay. Now, in that same uh, line of, of thinking, what do you see um, as some of the, the uh, opportunities uh, and also some of the challenges for the vendor community? And where will EngagePoint fit into that? I think modularity represents a pretty big shift for the vendor community, both in terms of opportunities. If you have domain expertise, you can now deliver that in the form of a well-encapsulated functional module. And you can truly shine by delivering a compelling module mm -hmm. without having to be a domain expert in every other module. But it also is challenging in the sense that if you are used to building from scratch, and if you are used to playing a role where there's a single throat to choke, mm -hmm. then it requires a redefinition of your value proposition. Understood. But the, the biggest opportunity is spurring innovation, and driving domain-specific competencies into functional modules, and vendors can truly excel at that. Great, great. That's certainly an opportunity. Um, of course, uh, the changing role of the systems integrator talks to um, the changing role also of procurement uh, methodologies as well. 
um, that that has been raised as a major concern. What, what will states need to do do to prepare for a more modular procurement um, uh, operation? Procurement is a key consideration. Um, certainly, states need to think about the sequence in, sequence in which they need to procure, mm -hmm. uh, what they are procuring. Are they procuring the module or the ecosystem? And what role are they going to play in terms of system integration? But when you think through all the, um, the ne necessities of procurement in the modular world, procurement will have to go through a fairly significant shift, and a new set of resources and skills will need to be brought in. Understood. Beyond core you know, MMIS uh, modernization, what do you see in terms of delivering upon this long-term vision um, for modularity in health and human services? My view is that we, as a society, we are moving towards more granular population segmentation and more personalization, with, be it precision care or precision benefits. And modularity represents our best approach to deliver the right benefit to the right citizen at the right time at the lowest cost to the taxpayer. And I believe that we will continue on that journey. Understood. Th this is a great opportunity the next couple of days, uh, Pradeep, to, to share your thoughts um, and to uh, hear a lot of information from all of these stakeholders. A very exciting time uh, in, uh, in Health and Human Services. Thank you for sh sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Rob.